Hello, Sumit, uh, is it visible? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, so as we were discussing about the Navstar uh, GPS segment, so there are three segments. One is called as a space segment where you have satellites in the orbits and you have control segments, you have user segment. Okay, so the satellite based positioning, uh, which was started in 1960 and uh, after the successful uh, commissioning of this uh, so-called uh, transit, uh, which was there before this Navistar GPS. Uh, in 1967, the commercial use started. The uh, transit positioning system was uh, uh, used to determine the widely spaced network covering large regions. Okay. Uh, so this transit satellite which was orbiting in polar plane at about uh, 1100 kilometer altitude. And uh, as you can see that uh, the Earth's gravity field is very strong near its, uh, you know, uh, several thousand kilometers, several hundred kilometers away from the surface of Earth. So the transit system were affected more by gravity field variation than the much higher orbiting GPS satellite. So that is one of the major common factor also that in your GPS orbit is uh, which is uh, at 20,000 kilometer away compared to the transit which was having 1100 kilometer uh, height orbit. So transit satellites were largely affected by the so called gravity field. So in addition, their transmission at uh, 150 and 400 megahertz. Uh, were also more susceptible towards ionospheric delays and disturbances. Please remember, as I've told you earlier also, that whenever a radio band or electromagnetic spectrum is allotted for any kind of communication, what is initially uh, uh, seen is that uh, the atmospheric window. Is there any atmospheric window available for those particular, uh, you know, uh, the, the so-called... Uh, uh, spectrum or not. So for transit that creates a lot of disturbances compared to the uh, to the uh, this this electromagnetic spectrum which was allotted for GPS, which was we will discuss soon uh, which which of the band is allotted. So the transit system was discontinued at the end of 1966 and replaced by GPS. So the Navistar's GPS. As I've told you, the objectives you ha you have seen those objectives. It provides positioning and timing 24 per day, 24 hours per day, 24 cross seven. That's uh, that's the terminology which we use. 24 cross seven, anywhere in the world and under any weather condition. We know that who operates GPS. It is the U.S. government. So you all must know that this GPS, uh, the global positioning system, is operated by U.S. department, U.S. government. 
so it was designed as a dual use system with the primary purpose of meeting the military needs for positioning and timing and over the period of last few decades it was seen that commercial as well as the civilian purpose is also equally important rather than having only military needs so uh, the in the past decade number of civilian application has increased scientific application has increased so what um, i must say with no end in the sight so because gps is so well known by uh, you know not just by expert but by general citizen as well and how how can i say like that uh, it is very well known to general uh, citizens also is because you also know it uh, despite uh, you know uh, reading uh, much about it you know the functioning of it little bit so uh, there is no need to dwell on which innovative application will be next or uh, even 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 attempt to list it numerous current uses you can you can use it any uh, anywhere uh, the, you can imagine it the use and you can apply it okay so the build of the satellite constellation which is we are going towards uh, satellite space segment the, the, there are several objective of this space segment one first is the satellite constellation which downlinks the following data that means the satellite the build up of satellite constellation began with the series block 1 satellite so but before going into the details of the what are what are the satellites were there let's just focus on to the objective of the satellites or objective of the space segment so as you clearly know that it is uh, it is the satellite signal which is primarily being used for any kind of so what satellite constellation downlinks the following data one is coded ranging signals that is one one component you must uh, uh, know this at this time it is the code coded ranging signals second is position information third is atmospheric data and fourth is lmni now i'll discuss each one by one what do you mean by coded ranging signal that means the transmission or the carrier waves are being used and the information which is very secret information is moderated over those carrier info, carrier signals and they are being transmitted so this whole process that means the information the binary information modulated over a carrier which is i think uh, these megahertz uh, or gigahertz kind of uh, frequency band which i was referring to earlier so they are modulated over those carrier and they are transmitted towards the user the second is the position information they will tell you its own position but not directly by the position of uh, you know uh, just by you know uh, xyz instead they will give you the orbital parameters and you will have a dedicated lab also where you would compute the satellite position in the ecef okay the cartesian coordinate you can compute easily okay and uh, sorry and similarly atmospheric information that that is in between the signal from satellite to user the atmosphere which is in between that they need to transmit that information also lmni is information so satellite is not only one there are uh, 30 35 satellites are in the space in the gps component so gps satellites are orbiting in one orbit it have information of all other 35 satellites also that is called as lmni it is a latin word greek word okay so it it informs about the information of the other satellites also being transmitted by individual satellites so just like if uh, in a class one student comes it will have the information of all other students so teacher usually asks bhai baaki sab log kahan hai so then you during online mode sab log kehte sir wo join kar rahe hain sab log join kar rahe hain na otherwise in 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 the offline mode wo palana kar raha hai palana sir hostel se nikla hai abhi pahunch raha hai class so that so the lmnac means you the information of all other satellite with the help of single satellite so this is the in general objective the basic function of the satellite that receives and store information transmitted by control station which is the eyes and ears of the gps you have gps then you have eyes and ears of gps is being maintained by or being done by the 
so called control station okay performed limited data processing by its own computer so it doesn't have to depend every time on control segment it still do certain uh, certain kind of processing okay maintain very accurate this time by means of two cesium and two rubidium oxides the atomic oscillators are on board that's why the cost is very huge million dollar uh, cost is involved for a individual satellite because it has two rubidium and two cesium clock why Two two because you do not need to get back to the satellite again on the surface. Or once it is launched, it is launched. Now everything will be controlled and maneuver only by your so-called control segment. So that's why they are uploaded with more than enough atomic oscillators. Transmit information to user by signal message or navigational message. Maneuver to position. in a space by thruster controlled by control so, so what happened let's say your uh, satellite orbit is in uh, the satellites in the orbit are deviating a little bit okay that means deviating is it is leaving the orbit because of some external forces so what control segment send a message that you apply a threshold at this angle so that you could move again in the orbit so this is the information is given by the control segment because control segment when we we'll come back to control segment after this space segment you will see that there are a lot of steps are being taken to make sure the satellite is in the right path so when we are getting the signal it's not so easy i mean there are a lot of process involved in our uh, so called uh, you know this uh, uh, data positioning process. so this this is very important that you must know that uh, these are the very basic function okay now this uh, uh the system of satellites the satellite system have been arranged in a group of generation that means the satellite are launched in a series of blocks okay so if i uh, tell you rightly that satellite constellation begin with the series block one satellites and these were concept validation satellite that did not have the selective availability and anti spoofing capabilities now i'll discuss what is the selective availability and anti spoofing but it's very popular very very much very much popular but you must understand at this time that it is started with block one satellite they were launched into 363 degree inclined orbital planes their position within the planes was such that optimal observing geometry was achieved over certain military proving grounds in the continental uh, united states so 11 block 1 satellites were launched in between 1978 to 1985 with one failure i mean one satellite launch was failure similar to irnss that means the irnss satellite which were supposed to launch for the orbital e was failed so similar to that in gps also you have uh, uh, one satellite failed the average lifetime was 8 to 9 years by to 10 years they were designed to provide 3 4 days of positioning service without contact with the ground control center now later on you will realize that this uh, this uh, so called uh, uh, without contact without contact operability of 3 to 4 days were increased to 180 days in recent advanced block second advanced uh, segment it was it was sent to the so called uh, 180 days but previously it was uh, it was uh, launched with this uh, without contact operability up to 3 to 4 days that means if nobody contacts if something happens to your control segment also and it is in no contact with the satellites what will happen satellite will move, uh, move in different path or what whatever happens but it is considered that they will work on its own up to 3 to 4 days okay. the launch of second generation gps satellite which is block second began in 1989 in addition to radiation hardened electronics these operational satellites had full sa and as capability i'll discuss in detail about the sa and as and you will also remember for quite a long time 
uh, what is SANAS. But at this time, you just understand this. These kind, these these are some plugins in in one of the one of the satellite system that uh, once switch on, they have certain uh, work to do. So SANAS are the uh, you know uh, the the so-called uh, plugins which is controlled by the control segment. Okay, so capability uh, um, of the block skin is uh, is uh, decided that they carried a navigation message that was valid for 14 days. Okay, nowadays it is up to 180 days. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, the capability is one uh, 14 days. Additional modification resulted in satellite block second A, which is advanced. The satellite can provide about six weeks of positioning service without any contact from control. So, so you could see from three to four days, it is going from three to four weeks uh, or, or maybe, maybe more, six weeks. So in one week, you have seven days. Six weeks means 42 days. And so it has uh, uh, six weeks of positioning service without any contact from control segment. 28 block second or second advanced satellites were launched between 1989 and 1997 into six plane, which is at 55 degree incline. Okay. So the first third generation GPS satellite from block second R, R for replenishment was successfully launched in 1970, sorry, 1997, okay? So, uh, I mean, uh, the block second and second A satellites were launched between 1989 to 1997 and uh, into six planes. That plane is called as a bird cage. It is a bird cage which will be shown just after a few uh, slides to you. And these bird cage have 55 degree incline to each other. The third, first third generation GPS satellite called second R replenishment was successfully launched in 1997. These satellites have the capability to determine their orbit autonomously through ultra high frequency cross link ranging and to generate their own navigation message by onboard processing. Sir. Previously, previously up to block one, second, and second day, the navigation message is being transmitted by control segment and which they have to forward to the user. But from second R, they have started generating their own so-called uh, control, uh, uh, sorry, navigation message. Any questions? Somebody wants to say something? Sir, uh, on which slide you are, sir? Uh, that list one is showing on our side. Block one, block two, block two, A, block ah, three. I'm again on the, I, I'm still on the same slide. I'm just... Uh, because see, you cannot try. These are all theoretical aspects. No? It is just have to be explained. Uh, I mean, um, uh, the content will be written in the books. You can follow the book. At this slide, I'm just telling you for uh, all uh, summary form, all the blocks. Sir, actually what you are reading, that is not in our side, sir. That is not being displayed. Ah, that is, uh, I'm just explaining it from my behalf only. Okay, sir. Okay. So <coughs> currently, <coughs> sorry. so currently you have a GPS satellite which is undergoing a major modernization. Most importantly, uh, your GPS satellite will transmit, uh, you know, um, signal for. Uh, better delineation of military and civil uses and uh, to increase the performance of GPS even more. Um, it is expected that uh, this uh, we are we are in the generation of uh, so called uh, block third. I mean at present we are in the block third but uh, in between these follow on and replenishment what happened is new codes for civilian as well as uh, uh, the so called uh, uh, military purpose codes M codes and L5 codes are being launched. Anyway, so these uh, um, uh, 
block second R M, which is replenishment and modernize. In that, the satellite uh, have transmitted uh, the civilian codes called uh, uh, on L two and new military codes on L one and L two. So these L one and L two, which uh, is uh, known as the Link one and link two from radio wave band. Uh, we are using these L one and L two signal as carrier frequencies. Okay, so uh, carrier frequency means through which or with the help of carrier frequency you are transmitting the actual coded signals. So that's more important to know at this point that uh, uh, these are. Uh, so first generation, that's what uh, I was uh, telling you uh, that, that so block one constellation predecessor to current GPS block second constellation were transitory and experimental in nature with focus on military application. Total number 11, one satellite failed, uh, 10 satellite were launched. They have reached end of life due to wear and tear of the atomic clocks and initially it was having only one cesium and two rubidium clocks okay and then you have uh, so design life for four to five years that's all i've explained the second generation just uh so built by rockwell international and vehicle number 30 to 21 having 50 hertz navigation message for global use Originally, they were to be put into orbit from a space shuttle, but uh, some disaster, they were reinforced and launched using Delta II rocket. So, capability to degrade signal, selective availability, and anti-spooling. This was launched in second. So, what is selective availability? will tell you uh, that it is tweaking of the clock information. So, selective availability is tweaking of the satellite clock information. Now, what is important to know is at this point is satellite signal is coming from satellite which is 20,000 kilometer away to you. And you are uh, computing this range from satellite to your user with the help of your so-called timing information. That means how much time signal has traveled Using that time information, you are computing this so-called uh, range. Now, my dear friend, just uh, tell me if error of one nanosecond is there in the time computation, just one nanosecond error in time computation, how much error it would be there in your range measurement? Just multiply it one nanosecond by speed of light. So one nanosecond is 10 to power 9. Sorry, minus 9. So 10 to power 9 is 30 centimeter. And one microsecond, which is 10 to power minus 6. With 30 meter. So just imagine. If you commit an error of one microsecond, one microsecond in the measurement of a radio signal that is coming from space to user, which is you, and if you commit one microsecond, the error in the range is 30 meter. Now, 30 meter is something which is, you can uh, just imagine that uh, I, I don't think it is 30 meters, it's 300 meters. Okay, so the 300 meter, you are inside the earth yes. or above yes. the earth. Isn't it? You are either inside the earth or just over 30 meter error is there in your position in the range measurement. No, sir, 300. So, uh, 300 meter is if error is measurement. In your range, then what will happen? Either you are in on the surface uh, above the surface of Earth or below the surface of Earth. That's what it means. The range is too short, it's too long by 300 meter. It's the only way you can think of. 
Now, what creates the problem is that if you are below the surface of Earth or above the surface of Earth, 300 meter, what creates problem? You can never compute your position. So the idea is to tweak the satellite clock just because so that no civilian could get a better accuracy more than 100 meter. So the idea in selective tweaking the satellite clock information such that you have so called uh, no better than accuracy of 100 meter. This is the selective availability. Okay. For selective availability, if if anybody asks you through Viva or any interview, what is selective availability? You just simply say that tweaking, intentional tweaking of the satellite clock information. So that user could not get better than 100 meter accuracy in its position. That's it. Okay. The anti spoofing is the, the so called encryption of a very precise P code. So there is uh, there are certain codes inside your uh, in this uh, GPS uh, domain that will be used to be transmitted through carrier information. So these codes P codes are uh, encrypted with another code to make a virtually uh, a different code altogether. So that is selective. Uh, sorry, anti spoofing. But anyways, we will discuss later on about more when we discuss the codes. So, you have automatic detection of certain error conditions. Satellites have a nomin nominal orbital period of 12 sidereal hours, such that they complete two orbital revolution within 24 hours period while the Earth rotate 360 degrees resulting in a trace of orbit in Earth's surface that epoch repeats twice daily. It's very important. If you, if somebody asks, what is the, uh, what is the so-called uh, uh, orbital period of a satellite, you would say 12 sidereal hours. That means satellite, sidereal means satellite would be visible again after four minutes before 24 hours. That means because it is in sidereal hours, it is 12 ST, which is ideal hours, which is referring to one phenomena that the satellite which you are observing today, let's say at 3, it is 337. So let's say you are observing any satellite at 337 above your sky. It will come back again to your head, but at 333, that means four minutes earlier. Because it is a sidereal time system in which we are observing the time period of the satellite okay a very good uh, uh, and student from canadian uh, university have written a very beautiful code to detect which satellite would be visible at what elevation in your space at what time just because of the previous history which is available to you anyways uh, each satellite is about the size of a large van with each solar panel covering surface area of 7.2 meter square c there is one more point which I want to tell you at this point that these are these information you do not have to remember, you do not have to memorize. It is just that you should be aware how this development of satellite from block one to block third F has happened. It is, it is your duty to know that it is not a only one day process. It has taken 40 to 45 years of development then at this time you are capable of getting your position in a certain precision level. You could understand this part. So what is important is that the satellite constellation was 23, 24 in three orbital planes, but later they were changed to six orbital plane with four satellite into each plane. So although there were 31 or 37 or 38 satellites are there in the space, but in fact, you are working with 24 satellite with six orbital plane and in each orbital plane, you have four satellite. This is the block second A, which is an advanced version of block second. Increase in navigational message data storage from 14 days for to 180 days. This is very, very much uh, 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 important information is that block second A is an advanced version of block second with increasing navigational data storage capability. That means it can store the data for up to 14 days to up to 180 days. 
uh, for block second day and were launched from 1997 days. That means it has the facility to update itself. आप आज से अगले 14 दिन के बारे में आप अपने बारे में बता सकते हैं और एक आदमी अपने एक अगले एक साल के बारे में बता सकता है तो आप ये समझ सकते हैं कि सेटेलाइट इज टेलिंग यू इट्स पोजिशन और पैरामीटर्स फॉर नेक्स्ट वन एट्टी डे वन एट्टी डेज ओके दैट्स हाउ इट इट इज प्रिसाइज दैट इट इज टेलिंग यू बाई द हेल्प ऑफ पैरामीटर्स दैट फॉर नेक्स्ट एट्टी डेज यू कैन ट्रैक इट आउट Capability to degrade uh, signals, which is selective availability and anti-spoofing, were there in the block second A. That cesium and rubidium clocks is there. This is the bird cage. This is the bird cage which I was referring. That uh, you have A B C D E F G. No, A B C D E F. So F uh, A to F are the orbital plane, and then you have. in each plane you could count up to a1 a2 a3 a4 b1 b2 b3 b4 so that's in between your earth this is a bird cage okay so the constellation of uh, six orbital planes with four satellite in each plane each satellite is identified with a two character code a letter identifies the orbital plane and a number identifies the satellite number in the plane okay so this is the bird cage please remember so weight of satellite 930 kg size 5.1 meter the length travel is very important 4 km per second design life 7.5 years it transmit two signals one is l1 at 1575.42 megahertz l2 at 1227.60 megahertz and receive from control segment at 783 this you need to remember i mean it is expected that you should remember this it is expected that you should remember this this very important point it is it has two cesium and two rubidium clocks it is launched by delta rocket what is what are the manufacturers manufacturers is rapwell international and altitude 2183 km orbital period 12 side so this is the general description just take a look i am looking i am dropping it to your your side just look at this uh, the slide identify try to identify the Certain parameter and just revert it back in case you have any queries. so uh the satellites at present have this facility to track to transmit sorry l1 l2 l5 and uh, they have uh, certain codes which will be explained later on at present you should know that the satellite are in the bird cage of six orbital plane inclined with respect to each other at 55 degree with respect to equator the us government's current policy is to make gps available in two services it is a policy of the us government to provide the services of uh, gps in two services domain one is called as pps another is called as sps 
so the pps is called as precise positioning service which is available to the military and only authorized users the other is called standard positioning service which is available to anyone who could have just like in mobile you have a chip gps chip so you would be working in the sps service domain okay so without uh, you know going into the details of uh, individual one uh, let's say that uh, pps users have access to encrypted py codes on n1 and l2 carriers while sps users can only observe the public ca code on l1 okay so as i've told you this p code there are two codes gold codes which is uh, given in the previous uh, your uh, so called uh, slide it was explained that it transmit the coded ranging signals isn't it the coded ranging signals so the trans the carriers are available l1 and l2 what are modulated over these are codes gold codes one is ca code another is p code so when ca code is modulated on l1 and l2 and it is being transmitted to you you can use it the military users they have this access to py codes on l2 as well as l1 okay so ca code will not be available on l2 only it is available on l1 so p code is available both on l1 and l2 the encryption of uh, the p code uh, which was uh, started in 1994 just to make sure that it has a uh, pure facility extended towards the military users okay the sps positioning which is again i am repeating sps means see uh, the gps is providing services in two class one is pps another is sps the full form of sps is standard positioning service so sps positioning capability was degraded by selective availability which is sa which is intentional tweaking of the clock information which is uh, called as the providing the falsification of the navigation message and tweaking of satellite clock and by presidential order the selective availability was called off or discontinued on 2000 may 1 2000 so it is a uh, it is a unfair to the civilians that us president at that time thought that it is unfair to the civilians because of their taxes we are launching these satellites and eventually we are not providing them the the so called sufficient uh, resources uh, of positioning so they turned it off in 2000 but the anti spoofing is still on at present also it is still on so so as i have told you gps offers services in two domain one is called sps another is pps standard positioning service precise positioning service so in the case of pps both satellite and receiver have improved significantly and where older receiver could observe the py code more accurately than the ca code this uh, dis uh, this distinction has all put disappeared with modern receiver technology so dual frequency py code users do have the advantage of being able to correct the effect of the ionosphere on the signal so that is the advantage of the pps now at present researchers have uh, devised various often patented procedure that make it possible to observe or utilize the encrypted py code which was initially given only to the authorized military user so this is your plane you could see it right ascension of ascending node what do you mean by ascending node just tell me what is ascending node anybody knows about ascending node
ascending node or the point where satellite from southern hemisphere comes towards from bottom to top towards northern hemisphere and when it intersect or cross the equator that point that virtual point of uh, uh, crossing the equator from coming from north southern hemisphere to northern is known as ascending node an opposite point where satellite goes from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere and it crosses the uh, equator that point is known as the descending node ab aap sochiye ab aap apne man mein uh, figure banaiye earth ka and you imagine that you have so called uh, vernal equinox and you are moving on celestial equator so the point where satellite has just come over the equator and goes from southern to northern hemisphere that point the angle from vernal equinox on celestial equator towards that point is called as right ascension of the ascending node just like you are measuring any star you can measure anything so right ascension of ascending node would be coming from the vernal equinox which is your uh, line joining the intersection of ecliptic to equator this is your line towards vernal equinox this shows the x axis of the earth centered inertial frame and that from that point you are measuring towards your uh, so called uh, ascending node line that is right ascension of ascending node okay you can also see the same in your uh, the graphics mode also i i hope it is visible at your end yes sir ab aap dekhiye ga isme this is your satellite orbit the the red one this is your satellite orbit this this dark red one is pointing towards vernal equinox this is your x axis of the earth centered inertial theek hai now your earth has your satellite is coming from bottom to top or from southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere and you could see this is the angle of right ascension of the ascending node this is the angle that means satellite is moving in this spot the moment it crosses the equator this is the equator point where it crosses the equator this point is known as node ascending node and this is your x axis the angle in this direction anti clockwise angle to that point both are both these lines are joining to earth center of mass so this line which is joining between this and this angle is known as right ascension of the ascending node just feel it i'm starting this video small video
So this is your earth. Semi major axis. Eccentricity. X, Y, Z are represented by red, green and blue. This is your inclination of the orbit. As we said, this is 50 to 55 degree or something like that. This is your. Yes, this is your right ascension of ascending node. And. From right ascension of ascending node. To the point which is near to the. This all will be explained uh, the anomalies, uh, the ascent. This all will be explained to you. The laboratory will discuss about the Keplerian parameters or Keplerian theory of the satellite. Okay, so in this figure, it is very simple. This is argument of latitude. That means satellite position at different different levels. The orbital planes they are all being given. Right ascension of ascending node. You could understand for each orbit, it would be a different angle. Because you have six orbits, so I have six, six different ascending nodes, six, six different right ascension of ascending node, as well as the argument of latitude, which is the position of a satellite at a particular interval. So second R, which is replenishment and uh, replacement, they have the capability to autonomously navigate themselves, autonav and generate their own 15 hertz navigation message, which will enable them to maintain full signal in space accuracy of at least 180 days without support from control segment. This is what I'm telling you. So nowadays satellite do not want to contact the or do not have this luxury uh, that they should be given every time instruction from control segment. They can in operate uh, without the support of control segment up to 180 days just like you are roaming around in your life once you pass out from your 12 you just work on your own after graduation also you work on your own so that's that's the way uh, we are developing our satellite so have reprogrammable satellite precursor processors enable problem fixes and upgrades in flight and increase satellite autonomy could be launched into any of the required GPS orbit at any time, assuming 60 day advance notice and required many fewer ground contact to maintain constellation. Okay. Predicted ephemeris clock data for a period of 200 dates are uploaded by ground control segment to support autonomous navigation. So very advanced technique in this uh, uh, block second hour. So these are I'll, I'll share the slide. You can go through it in detail, but uh, the very important points I'll explain it to you. Uh, the second generation block second R M, which is replacement modernized in September 2005. The first satellite of new generation second R M replacement modernized was successfully launched. The satellites of this type has the capacity to implement a second civil signal, which is L2C, and a new military signal with new code M code on L1, L1M, and L2M. So, aap aise in a in a simple language, you just understand. So, there are carriers. So, for popularly, you should just use that there are two carriers, L1 and L2. Okay. The carriers are just just like uh, the uh, signal with sufficient energy so that they have to travel from 20,000 kilometer away from a source which is satellite and they have to transmit to, towards Earth. They, they have to reach the Earth. So L1 and L2 are the two uh, radio bands where they are used as a carriers. Over these carriers, you transmit the codes, the gold codes, which are nothing but Zero one zero one zero one one zero. So these codes are being modulated over the carrier, and they be, are being transmitted towards the user. So as the process goes on, people have started developing new codes also. So M code, L two C codes. These are the codes which are uh, sorry, L two C signal and M codes are being generated for 
civilian purpose as well as military purpose so m code is for military purpose and l2c carrier signal is for the civilian so these are the new apart from l1 l2 you have l2c and a third block second f is planning to have a third frequency called l1 l5 sorry l5 allowing position determination with even higher precision these block second f satellites may be equipped with hydrogen mesher clock instead of atomic clocks due to their even higher precision okay uh, will consist of 33 satellites with improved capabilities life span of 15 years launch started from you know, 28th may to 1 1st jan 2012 12. in last of the generation we have block third satellites which are uh, i mean due to covid they could uh, not be launched but i guess in 2020 they were launched and with the they are called as block third generation satellite so these are the two these are the three fall one segment just have a look sir screen share nahi hai sir screen share nahi hai नहीं सर आपने वीडियो दिखाने के बाद वापस से स्क्रीन शेयर नहीं किया था ओके लेट मी जस्ट अगेन गो बैक ऑन द टॉप टू टेल यू व्हाट आई वाज स्क्रीन सो दिस दीज आर द राइट एसेंशन ऑफ द असेंडिंग नोड so six orbit have six different ascending node as the orbit in uh, individual orbit will have a different ascending node and descending node so these are the six orbit of latitude the scattered position at different level in that uh, orbit so that was the right ascension of the ascending kind of information then you have uh, block second r which is replenishment there i told you that they, they have the capability you navigate autonomously navigate in the engineering care over 50 hertz navigation data which enables them to make full recy for at least 80 days they have a reprogrammable satellite uh, processes enable problem fixes and identify them in case of error please remember in this that this they have the capability सर आपकी वॉइस ब्रेक हो रही
now is it clear hello yes sir yes sir so this capability is partly due to mutual satellite communication and uh, they have reprogrammable satellite processors they could work up to period of 210 days that means 210 days uh, uh, without uh, you know uh, any further support from ground signal and these are the uh, three different segments where you have third generation which is blocks third f satellites and, and uh, second generation follow on and block second r and f so as i was telling you that uh, primarily they have two carrier signal l1 and l2 over which you they have uh, transmitted the ca code and p code but later on they realized that it is not sufficient so they have launched uh, l2c the, uh, the second civilian signal and a third frequency another for the so called uh, l5 for civilian purpose as you are using dedicatedly the gps nowadays so these are the uh, se space segment summary uh, more about it you can follow it from any any book maybe cber you could follow but uh, it is not for your memorization you do not have to memorize everything you just have to understand the process of evolution of the satellite or space segment over the period of years okay i think uh, it would be much more uh, understandable that uh, we could uh, just learn how this satellite segment has evolved any any question so far any any questions if you do not uh, get any point just we can discuss it once again there is no problem So the next topic is control segment. So you have three segment. One is a space segment. The third, second one is control segment. So in control segment, as you can see, it is responsible for operating the so-called, uh, you know, uh, GPS and to update navigation message of the satellite. GPS master control station, also known as consolidated. Satellite Operation Center (CSOC) is located near Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay, 
master control station has monitoring station distributed around world to continuously track satellites in view okay information on satellite is then transmitted to mcs where computations are made and an up to date navigation messages is uploaded to satellite several uploads per day at present four uploads per day so what is happening in this control segment is that they are uh, as you we have seen in the space segment that previously in block 1 they need they are totally dependent on control segment then block second they were uh, uh, dependent up to 6 weeks they were independent up to 6 weeks on control segment then in last one we have seen that it it is up to 210 days they can work without any further update to be received from control segment so but importance of control segment is that they are the one which update them or update the satellite about them in the space or in the orbits and how they do it with the help of updates of these navigational message the message which contains the satellite navigation in the orbit is called as navigational message the message which contain the orbital parameters required for satellite navigation in the orbit is called as navigational message the gps master control station is the uh, the so called uh, whole soul in charge of updating operating maintaining the gps satellite in the space and this master control station has monitoring stations distributed around the world to continuously track satellites in view okay so information on satellite is then transmitted to mcs where computations are made and an up to date navigation message is uploaded to satellites several uploads per day per satellite okay i mean although in general four uploads are done at present per day but if required more than four can also be done mcs also implement a controlling methodology called selective availability to provide limited civilian access involves manipulating satellite clock and altering navigational message and by 2000 may 2000 is was put off that i that i told you it is the intentional degrading of the orbital components as well as satellite clock under sa what was there for authorized military user 3d positional accuracy of 16 meter with full access to p code for civilian user only 2d accuracy with not more than 100 meter with the degradation of ca code by selective availability the control segment stations are eyes and ears of gps and monitor satellite by measuring distances to them this data is then is smoothened using ionospheric and meteorological information before 15 minute normal points are generated and sent to mcs so the the master control station has several monitoring station and these several monitoring station are continuously tracking gps satellites they are continuously just like you have a gps receiver these monitoring stations are also having the so called uh, uh, stations which they continuously monitoring the uh, the so called uh, the the they are just simply collecting the data from receivers and they are continuously monitoring how much changes is there how much variation is there in your the so called uh, in the position of the satellite in the space uh, the kind of navigation quality of the data which we are getting you know so it the master control station uh, has monitoring station as well as ground antenna so monitoring station they simply track gps satellite as they pass overhead collect navigation signals range and carrier measurements and atmospheric data feed observation to master control station utilize sophisticated gps receivers 
provide global coverage via 16 sites, six from Air Force plus 10 from National Geodetic Agency. The master control station that provides command and control. Okay, it it provides command and control of the GPS constellation. It uses global monitor station to compute the precise location of the satellite. It generates navigation message for upload to the satellite. It monitors satellite broadcasts and system integrity to ensure health status of the satellite. Performs satellite maintenance and anomaly resolution, including repositioning satellite to maintain optimal constellation. Uh, currently, it is uh, you know backed up by a fully operational alternate master control station. If something happens to one master control station, a consolidated other backup is also prepared. Once the master control station prepared a final output file, it is sent to ground antennas and it sends commands, navigation data upload and processor program leads to satellite. It collects telemetry. Communicate via S band and perform S band ranging to provide anomaly resolution and early orbit support. Consists of four dedicated GPS ground antennas plus seven Air Force satellite control network stations. So this is a, a, a whole summary which I have just explained for control segment. There is one good figure which you should observe this. The summary is it computes the parameters describing satellite orbit and clock performance, health status of the satellite, requirement for any repositioning of the satellite. And that's how you see the location of monitoring station. At present, it is seen less here, but it is increased. So at present, there are three uplink stations located as Ascension Island, Diego Garcia, and Hoslane. So this is a uh, Hawaii station. This is Diego Garcia. This is Hoslehan. These are all monitoring stations plus equipped with a plink station too. You could see a very bright answer is that nothing is over India, Pakistan and China. And that's why in 1999, when uh, India required this GPS satellite signal uh, during Kargil war, uh, it was supposed to be not provided by US as part of their diplomatic policies. And that also created that India should have its own navigation system rather than depending on the other countries. China, Japan, Russia, they have their own GPS satellite system. That's why they do not want to install any such monitoring station of the GPS satellite. So it is, that's why this area is blank. It is no, uh, I mean, it is uh, not so common, but not also obvious that why there is no any uh, monitoring station in this particular area. So this is a summary of what uh, we are uh, discussing. The satellite monitoring station is monitoring him. They are control of ephemerides in satellite clocks. They transmit to the master control station, it predict uh, of prediction of ephemerides and clock behavior, and then it's sent to transmission of navigation message to the satellites. So this is available from the CBER. You can go through. Just look at this figure.
so this is the monitoring station this is the master control station and this is ground antenna so i think it is quite obvious that uh, they are observing just like normal gps user they are also have one task that they transmit the required uh, uh, observed data to master control station then which predict the fm rights and transmit uh, the navigation message to back to satellite so control sub segment 1 which is monitoring is segment it initially consisted of five tracking slash monitoring station to collect database on observing satellite in their orbit fazle and diego garcia ascension hawaii colorado spring which is increased up to uh, 21 in future so the the uh, at present if you say that uh, how much global coverage is available for monitoring site so it is at present 16 so at present uh, i mean i'm tracking the website right now it is 16 at present okay so these are the monitoring stations tracking implemented with two frequency receiver equipped with highly precise cesium oscillator and collection of meta meteorological data for accurate evaluation of tropospheric delay okay so uh, at at this stage do not worry about too many aspect coming into single slide but uh, what is important has been mentioned in the slide but anyways we will be discussing more on tropospheric delay and atmospheric delay later on in the course it just started so don't worry about it just uh, try to follow the content from the slide as well as the from the book where you could follow the cber for understanding of the space segment control segment and user segment that would only be additional to your uh, understanding what we are uh, discussing in the class and that is required okay so one mcs at us air force space command facilities at colorado spring takes data from other monitoring station and continuous consequently predicts satellite orbit by extrapolation computes clock corrections for satellite time referred to gps time frame satellite time synchronization done by connecting master control station to usno in washington dc correction data sent to transmitting station so these are the responsibilities of the control sub segment so uh, you just see it the slide Sumit, I have shared this first lecture slide, which we were discussing from two days. Uh, I hope it is visible at your end too. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. similarly about uplinking stations they work at uh, uh, there there is certain frequency of 1783 megahertz at which they transmit back to the satellite about the information with they need to re, uh, you know update their satellite orbit then the user segment 
we are the users we consist of receiving unit which is receiver with capability to obtain real time positioning that we do it is receivers can be handheld radio receivers computers which measures the time that radio signal takes to the travel from gps satellites until it receives at gps antenna using that time travel multiplied by speed of light we provide the calculation of range of each satellite in the view from this an additional information the satellite orbit and velocity the internal gps receiver software calculates the position through process of space resection as i have told you in the multiple classes that gps principle the basic principle of gps working is space resection so this is the summary which uh, which is very uh, popular that you should know at present in general two uh, microwave carrier signals which are popularly used l1 and l2 with ca and p code modulated over it l2 only p code modulated over it global positioning reference wgs84 ecef current gps constellation you have 22 block second and 6 block second r satellite and boeing is under contract with us air force to gps follow on second follow on satellite with a potential of 12 satellite currently this uh, uh, as on july january 1 2012 satellites from block second block second a block second r r and m second f the most recent block second level launched on october 2011 okay so these are the uh, you know uh, at also uh, i mean um, if you exactly want that how many satellites are there so it is some, somewhere around 27 or uh, maybe you know uh, 29 i guess so as as on january 11 uh, sorry january 1 2022 there were a total of 29 operational satellites in the gps constellation and uh, with the help of which in the second third follow on you have four satellite i mean i mean if you want block wise i can tell you block second r has six satellites block second r and m has seven satellite block second f has 12 satellite and block uh, a third has four satellite for uh, any any uh, detailed understanding you can go through this website gps.gov it's highly updated you should uh, i mean everyone should uh, scroll it out think and add many many many, many more questions so that you could be able to pick it up the various content the advantages the advantages is the intervisibility between station is not necessary in the case of gps independent of weather condition position accuracy is largely a function of interstation distance generally homogeneous accuracy the points are placed where they are required it is more efficient more flexible and less time consuming can be used around the clock three dimensional information high accuracy can be achieved with relatively little effort okay so these are the general advantage limitations high efficiency has its price if you want a very precise information in terms of position you need to pay more because inter station intervisibility is not necessary gps is particularly attractive technology for use in rugged inhospitable terrain however the log logistical problems like transportation supporting several field parties are still formidable it cannot be used underground the you need a open sky to work in it results may need to be transformed into local geodetic system before they can be integrated with the other conventional survey just as i as i told you during the coordinate transformation comparison of gps and terrestrial results will be the source of confusion controversy and conflicts for many years to come gps heights has to be reduced to a sea level datum more precisely with the help of geoid which you have done it i mean i have told you where various link where you can convert your uh, latitude longitude and ellipsoidal height to msl 
So if we say that status of GPS surveying for specialist only national and continental networks, observation times not important, accuracy important, reliable result often required operator in intervention, software was hardly user friendly. Nowadays, Post-processing only, many improvements were in a small receiver, rapid static, kinematic. These are all, you know, the, the so-called uh, uh, the surveying techniques or the advanced surveying techniques which we which are we are using in GPS survey. Today, all people expected to use it for variety of application. Accuracy and reliability almost taken for granted. Speed, ease of use, user features are key requirements. Software has to be automated, constant demand for additional capabilities. And satellite 20,000 kilometers from away from Earth, code measurement, we are achieving the position in centimeter. At this stage, it is expected that you should be little more aware about the, you know, uh, content which is uh, which is being given to, uh, you know, uh, to you just for reading purpose. You should go through and explore certain content. Try to develop your own understanding. Just I have explained to you that uh, I have not taken any such course, but as over the period of years, we have developed the understanding on the content. So you need to read uh, just like you have done in the case of uh, a reference system and coordinate system. Similarly, you have to do it in the case of individual slides also. You have to read the content, understand it. Sometimes you have a confusion, you write it down. They say, I could not understand this part. I could not understand this part. That will help you when we discuss during the discussion period, we'll discuss some other aspect which is not covered in the class and through which you, some of the queries could be resolved. Okay, so uh, any any more question on this? Sir, second line, what it is saying, sir? This one? Accuracy and reliability almost taken for granted. What does it mean, sir? I mean, nowadays you cannot uh, say that uh, if you open your Google map and you can switch it on, it is expected that uh, you should be tracked within centimeter level accuracy on that ground. I mean, if it is you are working on the left lane of a highway, you would be highlighted as your point on the left lane only. It should not be reflected on the right lane. You get my point? So. The accuracy and reliability, yes. when it is said that almost taken for granted, that means you are considering GPS as a most precise tool for giving you the position. And that too, that you are having this uh, GPS chips nowadays in your mobile phones too. You can develop a Rhinex file also. Uh, well, when we discuss later on, you will realize that we can, we can have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Rhinex file downloaded from the uh your mobile phones i'll i'll show you one application in one of the laboratory any any more questions one question sumit has asked uh, about the Chandler Wobble, yes. So, uh, in Chandler Wobble, uh, what what is your exact confusion, sir? Uh, sir, I want to confirm that that um, when the uh, that rotation axis and the surface of Earth, it when it touches this crosses, a point is created. The deviation in this point is that the phenomenon of Chandler Wobble. Yes. Okay. Sir. And one more thing, sir. Sir, uh, in what way it deviates up and down or left, right means in what? No, uh, not 
not not up on up and down it is uh, as you could see just it is moving on the upper top surface in a in a in a certain periodicity okay sir <clears throat> so chandler wobble is basically uh, the rotation axis isn't it the rotation axis of uh, your earth or i mean does not coincide with the actual uh, polar major axis of inertia for angular momentum uh, to remain constant so this also means that because of the heterogeneity inside your earth what happens as well as the forces acting over it so obviously the chandler wobble which is which should be of 3 uh, 3 or 5 days but in general it is said that it is 430 days because it is forced wobble it is not free wobble free wobble is chandler wobble but what we are observing on the surface of earth or or the with what we are observing with the rotation axis of the earth it is the forced wobble you get it that's why the period is changed it is uh, external forcing is apl applicable sumit you get it yes sir thank you sir any any more questions <clears throat> 